Hi, my name is Michael. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Apple TV app icon template for Photoshop that you can get from applypixels.com. With this template, you can render the icon sizes needed for tvOS from a single size. There's a system for creating up to five parallax layers in the icon, and you can export everything, both sizes and parallax layers, with the bundled export actions. What you need is this folder here downloaded from applypixels and a copy of Photoshop. The folder includes a PSD file, an actions file, ATN file, and a readme file. Now let me show you how to use this. But before we dive in, you want to import the actions. A lot of people forget this. You do this simply by double-clicking the ATN file. And that should add the actions to your actions pane in Photoshop. And remember, if you're not seeing your actions pane, you can access it by going to Window and finding actions. Great. So you want to make an Apple TV app icon. Now let's open up the main PSD file. And that looks something like this. Now for the most part, this template is very similar to my other icon templates, with one big exception that I'll get to in just a minute. Currently, tvOS app icons only require two sizes. There is a large size, which is 1280 by 768, which is used for the App Store. And there's a smaller size, which is 400 by 240, which is used for the home screen itself. As usual, there's some preview action going on down here. A neat little uh, addition that I added is that you also can go and find a dark mode that you can enable so you can see your icon on the new dark mode that was introduced in iOS 10. Okay, so let's make an icon. You wanna go and find the layer in the layers pane called Edit Me and Save. You right click that and hit Edit Contents or just simply double click on it. That opens up the app icon PSB file. It's in here that we'll create our icon. Now quickly before we actually create an icon, it might be interesting to just look at the guides that I've included. Apple proposes a minimum safe zone and a suggested safe zone, which I've made sure to include here and through the guides that you're seeing. And this brings us to the exception I was talking about before. The one big difference between Apple TV app icons and icons for other platforms is the parallax effect that Apple enables you to do. That's why you have suggested and minimum safe zones, because on tvOS, when you focus on the icon, the icon pops out and the parallax is enabled. Now this poses a bit of a challenge when you wanna create an automated resource like the one we got here. Apple allows you to include up to five separate layers inside your icon to create this parallax effect. So how do we include that in a template like this? Well, what I've done is I've created five separate layers out here in the layers pane under which you need to create the separate pieces of artwork in each layer that you want to parallax. The first layer is the top layer and the fifth layer is the bottom layer. Now, clean templates just come with good old Gliffy here in the first layer and a background in the fifth layer, meaning there's not a lot of parallax going on in this app icon right now. But if you wanted to take advantage of this cool effect on the platform, what you need to do is create your artwork inside these separate folders, going all the way from the top to the bottom. And if you don't want to use all five layers of parallaxing in your icon, that's fine too. Just leave them empty. They'll still spit out an empty PNG file when we export them, but you can just delete those. Now, if all of that was confusing, Using, let me just kind of try and show it to you. So let's delete old Gliffy here. Let's also hide the grid and the safe zone. I've included a couple of gradients that are already on the platform and uh, we could just kind of create a wonderful orange background here. Note that I've put these gradients in the fifth layer folder because for all intents and purposes, that will be the layer that's at the bottom of the parallaxing stack. Now let's see if we can create a very simple parallax icon. First of all, we're going to create something that's going to be in the foreground. And we're obviously designing the icon for the coolest tvOS app, which involves rabbits. Beautiful bunny right there. And notice how I'm doing that in the layer one folder. This is the topmost layer in the parallax stack. Right now, this wouldn't parallax a whole lot because that'd only be layer one and layer five, which would be the background. So let's see if we can create something in between. Let's go to layer two and create something that could be behind this bunny. I'm thinking that we might want some grass in there. That's the ground. And let's add another layer of parallax. Maybe we'll create beautiful sun kind of bunny. That's absolutely gorgeous. Okay, I didn't promise this would be a tutorial on making great icons. I'm just trying to illustrate the parallaxing effect. So what we have now is we have a layer one, which is a bunny. We have a layer two, which is the grass or the ground. And we have a layer three, which is the sun. 
We have a layer 4, which I'm gonna leave empty to illustrate what actually happens to an empty layer once we click export. And we have a layer 5, which is the background. Once you're done creating your icon, you will just hit Command S or Control S on a Windows PC, and you can close the nested smart object. And back in the main PSD file, you can see the sizes have updated automatically. And we can also preview our little bunny icon here on the TVOS home screen. If we wanted to, we can go and find the dark mode as well. I'm not sure what this app is for, but I want it on my TV. So obviously you can go back and forth here until you are satisfied with your masterpiece. And once you are done, you wanna go and find the actions that we imported before. You wanna go ahead and run that action. It's gonna do its magic, and what it's actually doing is it's going through the multiple layers in the parallax and saving them out as separate PNG files. And once it's done, you'll go to your desktop and you'll find all of the individual layers of your parallax icon. If you just preview it, here you'll see the first layer in the two sizes, second layer, and the third layer, and here's the fourth layer. Now we didn't really use a fourth layer in our parallax, so you can go ahead and delete those two. They're just empty PNG files. And here's a fifth layer. And when you submit your tvOS app, you'll get the option of uploading these individual parallax layers and designating them accordingly. And just to show you that this actually works, I've got the parallax preview that developers could get from Apple. It's pretty simple. We'll just drop in the multiple layers into the preview and we'll just arrange them accordingly. And there we go. There's our bunny and our ground and our sun on a parallaxing background. That's neat. You can get this resource and other cool design resources by becoming a subscribing member at applypixels.com. I really hope this template helps you create better icons for the Apple TV. Thanks for watching.